Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be unboxing and doing a quick hands-on review of the OnePlus Nord. So guys, here's the box. Now before we get started, let's have a quick information about the phone itself. So OnePlus has launched this phone in three variants. Base variant is priced at 25,000 rupees and comes with 6 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, which by the way is not available right now. It should be available from September. Next variant, which is actually available right now, is priced at 28,000 rupees, comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Next variant is priced at 30,000 rupees for 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It's available in two colors, blue marble and gray onyx and we have the gray onyx in the 12 gigabytes variant. So guys, that was the quick information about the pricing and stuff. By the way, it's available online on amazon.in and oneplus very own website and you can also buy it offline. Now with that said, let's have a physical overview of the box. So this is the overall box packaging and it looks completely different from the previous OnePlus phones, especially in the color, that's the most noticeable thing. All the previous OnePlus phones, bigger ones at least, apart from the X, came in the red packaging and this one obviously comes in complete black and we have the OnePlus logo at the bottom and it says Nord for some reason three times. On the left side, we have the phone's name once again, that's OnePlus Nord. And on the right side, we have just the branding. At the top and bottom, it's completely plain. And on the back side, we have box contents, IME numbers, and so on. Now let's open it. So there's nothing on the lid. Let me just put that aside. Next, we have the phone itself. On the top, it says, this way Nord. Well, let's put that aside as well. Next, we have a cardboard box with a lot of contents. So we have some documentation, welcome letter, safety information, quick start guide, and we have some more stuff. So we have some more documentation. So this is the red cable card, we'll talk about that later. Next, we have another cardboard box which probably contains a SIM card ejector. I guess all this documentation should come inside this wrong packaging. Anyway, next we have a transparent soft silicone case with a pretty cool design. Next we have the 30 watts watt charger and finally a USB Type-C charging cable. So these are all the contents of the box. Let me just put everything aside and come back to the phone. So this is the phone, it comes in plastic wrapping and on the back side as usual we get a sticker with IMEA numbers. Let me put that aside as well. So guys, this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how it looks on the front. By the way, it also comes with a free screen guard pre-applied, which I really appreciate. Now let's have a physical overview. On the back, this phone has a 3D curved Con Gorilla Glass 5 for additional protection and underneath that, it has this grey hue paint job done to it, which is mostly a mirror finish and it also has a gradient colour which shifts from dark grey to light grey. It looks pretty cool though. Overall, it looks pretty decent. On the top left corner, we have the camera module with a quad camera setup, followed by dual LED flash. That's followed by the OnePlus logo and the OnePlus branding at the bottom. On the front, you get a massive display with a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for protection, along with a punch hole design housing two dual front facing cameras. Above the display, we have the earpiece and below the display, it's completely plain and the chin is pretty small. Now for the sides, on the right side, it has the alert slider followed by the power button and on the left side, it has the volume buttons. These buttons are made of metal and have a nice clicky feel to them and they are sufficiently elevated as well. At the top, it has just the secondary microphone for noise cancellation and finally, at the bottom, we have the SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots, no SD card slot at all, followed by the primary microphone, USB Type-C charging port and the speaker grill. Now this phone has a thickness of 8.2 mm and weighs 184 grams. In hand, it fits pretty perfectly. And as for the thickness, it does feel slightly thicker than your regular phones. In terms of weight, weight distribution is decent and it has a bit of weight to it. Not too heavy, not too light. Feels kind of perfect. Now let me put on the case and test it out. Now this is how the phone looks with the case on and this is how it looks on the front. Back to the pattern on the case, it looks kind of weird there's no reason for this particular cutout or complete transparency. It just feels weird. Anyway, that's just the design. As far as the case goes, 
it can offer you some extra grip and prevent smudges that's all it doesn't offer you any kind of protection it is a tiny bit of raised lip for the camera module which is almost negligible and it has a tiny bit of raised lip for the display which actually is much better than the protection offered for the camera module so overall you can use this case for few days but i would definitely recommend you to get a better case as soon as possible especially if you're worried about dropping this phone now these are the complete specifications of this phone on the rear, this phone has a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary camera with f1.75 aperture with Sony IMX586 sensor with optical image stabilization. By the way, this is the same primary camera seen in the OnePlus 8. That's followed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 119 degree field of view, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera for taking portrait shots, and finally, a 2 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture for taking macro shots. For selfies, you get a dual camera setup with a 32 megapixel primary selfie camera with f2.4 fire aperture and Sony IMX616 sensor. You also get an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 105 degree field of view and f2.4 fire aperture. As for the display, it has a 6.44 inch AMOLED display with 90Hz refresh rate with 20 is to 9 aspect ratio, protected by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Under the hood, it sports a Snapdragon 765G processor with Adreno 620 GPU with 12GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 256GB of UFS 2.1 storage. Right out of the box, it will be running Oxygen OS 10.5 based on Android 10. And powering this device is a 4115mAh battery that supports fast charging and comes with warp charger 30T inside the box and you can get up to 70% of charge in just less than 30 minutes. By the way guys, if you have missed in the physical overview, this phone doesn't have an audio jack. So you have to use the same Type-C port for audio or the wire. So guys, now let me turn on the phone and set it up and come back to you in a second. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. Now let's check out the storage section. So out of that 256 gigabytes of storage, we get about 232 gigabytes of space for our user apps and user data. Now let's check the about page. So this phone is running OxygenOS version 10.5 based on Android 10 with the July security patch, which is pretty great. Now let's check out the camera interface. So this is a camera interface for the rear camera and by default, it opens up the primary 48 megapixel camera. By the way guys, even though this phone has a 48 megapixel camera, by default, it only takes 12 megapixel pictures. And if you want to take a 48 megapixel picture, you need to enable 48 MP mode from here. Now we are using the 48 MP mode and we can take a 48 megapixel picture, but capturing speeds are slightly slower. It's probably because of the processing and the images are usually much larger in size than your regular 12 megapixel picture. Now to come out of this mode, once again do the same. And now we are back to the regular 12 MP mode. Now over here we have two different toggles and this is for 2x zoom. This is not optical zoom, it's just a digital zoom. It's just like zooming in into a picture. So it's completely useless. Next, we have a toggle to use the wide angle camera. And now we are using the wide angle camera. I'll just give you a reference. So let's put the keyboard here. Now this is the primary camera and this is the wide angle camera. So obviously it's pretty wide. Over here, we have a button for Google Lens to quickly scan for things using your camera application. Now we also have a dedicated macro mode on this phone and you can access it from here. Now we are using the macro camera. I'll show you sample shots later. Now, if we go to the right side, we have the portrait mode and we have the regular portrait mode and the wide angle portrait mode, which is pretty bad in fact. Next, we have a dedicated nightscape mode, which takes better pictures in low lighting conditions. And you can use the nightscape mode for both the primary camera and even for the wide angle camera. And sadly, you don't have nightscape for front camera. Next, we have the regular pro mode. Let's go back. Now if we go to the left side, we have video recording. We can record with the primary camera. And even while recording with the primary camera, you can switch to the wide angle camera in between, which is pretty cool. We also have a new feature which super stabilizes the footage, which OnePlus like to call it super stable. Now once you turn it on, you get a super stable footage. Next we have slow motion, that's pretty common. Next we have panorama. And finally, time lapse. Once again, you can record it with the primary camera or even with the wide angle camera. Now let's check out the front facing camera. 
So this is the interface for the front facing camera. There really isn't anything super impressive. We have a toggle over here to switch between the primary camera and the wide angle camera. And as you can see, wide angle front facing camera is super wide. So that's the primary camera. On the right side, we have the regular portrait selfie mode. And on the left side, we have video recording. Once again, we can record video with a primary camera or by using the wide angle camera. And for the front camera, we don't have that super stable mode. Just for a quick reference, Vivo V19, which is also priced in the same price segment, also comes with dual front facing cameras, but it has a super stable mode or ultra stable mode for the front camera video recording. So guys, these are all the camera related features. Now these are some sample shots. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner. I've already set it up and here we go. So fingerprint scanner is pretty fast. And by the way guys, haptic feedback on this phone is not super great, but it's definitely pretty good, better than some of the early OnePlus phones and definitely better than most phones in this price segment. That's definitely one thing I really appreciate. And every time you unlock the phone, it also gives you a nice haptic feedback. It's very subtle, but it's there. Now let's try face unlock. And once again, face unlock is pretty fast. Now that's in good lighting conditions. Let's test it in low lighting conditions. By the way guys, there is still a light in the background, which is pretty dim. Now let me turn off everything and test it in complete darkness. And it still works pretty well. As you can see, it's trying to increase the screen brightness to compensate for low lighting conditions. So guys, that was face unlock feature and it works really well. It's definitely usable. In terms of security, it's not as good as the fingerprint scanner, but it's definitely usable. And that too in all lighting conditions. Now let's check the speaker loudness. So guys, that was the speaker loudness and I must say this phone definitely has one of the loudest speakers in this price segment. So it's going to be great for ringtones alarms and especially great for media consumption. Now one of the most highlighting features about this phone is definitely its display. And even though I can't show you that 90Hz refresh rate on screen, but I can definitely tell you that that 90Hz display definitely works and it's definitely a huge improvement over your regular 60Hz display. And that's definitely a huge selling point for this phone. Right out of the box, this phone ships with 90Hz refresh rate. And for some reason, if you want to go back to 60 or just make sure if 90Hz is enabled or not, just go to display settings, then select advanced. From here, you can check or change your refresh rate. As I've said, by default, it is set to 90Hz. By the way, we also get the famous alert slider on the right side. And using this, we can change the sound profiles without even turning on the phone which also is a trademark for the OnePlus phones. Now, before I conclude, these are the benchmark scores. So guys, this is the new OnePlus Nord, a kind of a mid-range phone from OnePlus under 30,000 rupees. And I must say, this is definitely one of the best phones that you can get under 30,000 rupees, at least right now in India. There are definitely other phones, more powerful phones under 30,000 rupees, but this phone offers things which other phones simply don't. Like the pure stock Android experience with pretty quick updates, that amazing looking display with a punch hole design with an in-display fingerprint scanner. And that I have to mention because recently companies are switching to a regular IPS panel with the fingerprint scanner embedded in a power button, which is something that I really don't like. So OnePlus is still sticking to giving us something really great. And you also get that Warp Charge 30T, which can charge your phone insanely fast. So for the price you're paying for this phone, it's probably not the best in all the categories. But overall, 
this is a safe bet and this is something that you can recommend to anyone and it will definitely not disappoint. Now with all that said, I still think the price is a bit too high and if it was cut down to around 20,000 rupees for the base variant, I think it's going to be a killer deal. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video or if you have any questions about this phone, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.